Okay, we're going to be looking at the food chain gizmo today. This is our final uh, gizmo for this unit, and it's really kind of wrapping up and tying in everything that we have done so far. So the food chain gizmo is looking at, obviously, a food chain. We're going to be looking at energy and how energy is transferred through it, and our main concept we're going to be looking at is change and how major changes can affect a food chain and can affect an ecosystem. So then we have our vocabulary, the prior knowledge, and we're going to look at the warm-up. Now, the warm-up is asking us to look at current populations. So, go through and look at our gizmo. Here it is. Uh, current population of hawks, 42. Current population of snakes, 278. Current population of rabbits, 2,566. And current population for grass, 27,300. Go ahead and record those numbers there. Now, it's asking us to go ahead and look at the bar chart, click play, and see what we notice. So we'll click our bar chart, click play, and we can let it go for a little bit, let it go for a year. All right, now what do we notice? Well, our hawks stayed the same. Little bit more rabbits. Grass, a little bit more. Snakes increased a little bit. So all in all, not much changed. Uh, if the populations don't change very much, and this is the point, our ecosystem is in equilibrium. Now what that means is that it's balanced. It's well balanced. Everything is in a state where it doesn't overpopulate something else. Go ahead and look at activity A, predator-prey relationship. So with this, we're going to be figuring out what is going to, how does one organism affect the others? So it says, run the gizmo over several different starting conditions. You can use plus or minus to add them. You can also change a population to diseased, unhealthy, okay? So we can change hawks to diseased, we can remove hawks, we can add hawks, change any number of things. Put it back to 42 and put them to healthy. Uh, form a hypothesis. How do you think predator and prey populations affect one another? So we can go ahead and look at this, form a hypothesis. How do you think the predators, and we'll say the hawk is probably the biggest predator because they're at the top of the pyramid, how do they affect the others, okay? How does the prey affect them? How does the number of them affect each one? So here we're going to be looking at more predictions. And again, this is our main fundamental in science. Predict. What do we think is going to happen? So we're going to put down here what is going to happen if you double the rabbit population. Double means twice as many. So I'll make a prediction. Is grass going to increase or decrease? Are snakes going to increase or decrease? Are hawks going to increase or decrease? Okay, so we'll make our predictions. We'll also make a prediction for what's going to happen if we have the number of rabbits. That means cut in half. So if we cut the number of rabbits in half, what's going to happen to the grass? What's going to happen to the snakes? What's going to happen to the hawks? Okay, now to test these, we'll go back over here, make sure they're set up, and we'll start off with double. So 2,500, that's about 5,000. So we'll get about 5,000. There we go. And we'll let it go for a month. All right, we let it go for a month. So in that time, now we need to look. What happened to the hawks? And go through and look. Well, what happened to the grass? Well, the grass decreased. Rabbits, obviously, they decreased because we started with at 200%. Snakes increased. Hawks increased. So we can see that grass actually decreased. Our result was a decrease. Snakes was an increase. Hawks was an increase. So let's go through and reset this. And we will look at having it. So 2,500, 1,200 something, 1,251. That looks good. We'll do the same thing. Let it go about a month. All right, now we check it. So, wow, now we look and see grass went way up, rabbits actually increased, 
snake population and hawk population both decreased. So we can see how that affected it. You can answer those questions there. Now you can do the same thing predicting for what will happen if you double the snakes, what will happen to the grass, rabbits, and hawks. Have the snakes, half the number of snakes, what'll, how will that affect the grass, rabbits, and hawks? And you'll do the same thing for hawks. How will doubling hawks affect the grass, rabbits, and snakes? And cutting it in half, how will that affect it? You have some questions here to answer. How did increasing snakes affect grass? Why did that happen? How did increasing hawks affect the rabbits? Why did that happen? And your conclusion, what effect did removing predators have on prey? Okay, how did removing prey affect the predators? Now activity B, this is our big, big one for this entire unit that we've been covering. We're going to be looking at how energy and how change can affect an ecosystem, long-term change. So observe, kill off most of the hawks. We don't want to do this, but this is the reason why we use the gizmos, because we can affect an ecosystem without actually harming it. So I would say taking it down to nine or ten, nine, is taking away most of them. Click play and observe the graph for one year, 12 months. All right, and we can see what happened. After one year, the number of hawks is back up to about 100%. We see that rabbits, wow, rabbits dropped a whole lot. Grass increased, snakes increased a whole lot, and then snakes balanced off. And after a year, we're back to everything being back in equilibrium. Okay, so why do we think this changed? We'll put these here. You're going to reset this, use plus or minus buttons, or choose diseased, and click play again for 12 months and see what happens. Now, our big concern with this, the big reason we've done this is these last questions. And we talked about this in class, the summarize and the race questions. Now, the summarize right here, what's a major disturbance the ecosystem was able to completely recover from? Well, we just saw that. Uh, create a disturbance where the ecosystem reach, reaches a new equilibrium. That means, can you create a scenario when looking at the graph where everything goes back to balanced, but maybe it's at 50% or 75%. Maybe you found a way to make everything at 150%. What did you change that made it reach that new state of equilibrium? And finally, what was a disturbance that completely collapsed? What did you do to either the health or the number of grass, rabbits, hawks, or snakes to completely collapse the entire ecosystem? And then finally, race, restate, answer, cite, and explain. This is the important question, guys. This is the big one I'm going to be looking at. How does changing one level affect all the other levels? And you have plenty of evidence. You have evidence that you've built up through this gizmo and through the prairie ecosystem gizmo. Give me examples to explain how changing one level of food chain affects everything else.